Hi, this is Professor Dan Kernler with another video for my Math 120 Statistics course. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about quantitative data, um, which are numbers, so measurements or counts. And so we're going to talk about how to organize them into tables, how to create something called a histogram, and then some couple other less popular or less common graphs, stem and leaf and dot plots. And then we'll talk about the shape of the distribution. So let's start with discrete data. Remember, and I'll see if I can remember to do that, put the link up to types of data from section 1.2. Discrete data were countable, one, two, three, four. Uh, not measuring anything, how long is something, but, but countable. So I have some data from a previous student survey. I've got this uh, in StatCrunch. This was from fall 2015. And I had students answer how many desktops do they have in their house, laptops, tablets, number of siblings. So one thing I asked was to rate their interest from 1 to 10. So say I want to compile those into a table. Uh, what I would do is do stat tables again, just like we did in the last video. And I'm going to do frequency, relative frequency, and I want to do interest in the course. And with discrete data, you'll see that it just lumps them individually. Uh, unless you have a really wide range and it goes from 1 to 100, then it'll try to group them. But here it just listed them individually, which is what it does for discrete data. So let me see. I'm going to copy this and see if we can get this in our PowerPoint. Uh, let's see here. Oh, not easily. OK, is there a quick way for me to do this? You want to watch me typing. Let's see if I can edit the typing out. Oh boy. Technical difficulties here. So interest two. We're missing a three, but we want to make sure to include that there's a zero there. So it looks like it goes two to ten. And then frequency uh, one, two, three. Nope. The three was zero, right? Zero, two, three, five, seven, five, one, two. And then we have the relative frequencies. Let's round to the hundredths place. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, because of rounding, sometimes, did I get off by one there? Oh, I did. Shoot. Because <laughs> we have the zero here. Um, sometimes, because of rounding, you might be off if you added all of these up. You might be off, it might say 1.01 or 0.99, but that's just due, uh, just due to rounding. So keep that in mind, that's quite possible. So that's discrete data, and again, with discrete data, discrete quantitative data, if you have individual values, the table would just list all of the individual values and their frequency and relative frequency, um, keeping in mind that if you have any missing values, you want to include them in the table and list them as zero. Now that's different from <coughs> continuous data. So we have another study. This one's in our shared file, our shared group in StatCrunch. Now this is about low birth weight study of women, and I think it was their weight and height and some other factors and the birth weight of the child. And so we have weight. I think it's in grams um, because it's in thousands. So I think it's in grams. Um, and so you're measuring the weight. You're rounding to the nearest gram. Really, it could be milligrams or micrograms or nanograms or whatever. So it's, it's the weight that you record is limited by the accuracy of your device. So that's a continuous random variable. And you can't enter all of the possibilities. You have to enter ranges. So if we go back to the data, uh, let's see. I have this low birth weight study. And you can see here, here's the birth weight of um, the child. So let's go stat tables frequency and we want the birth weight and we're going to do frequency and relative frequency and hit compute and you'll see it's going to pop up. Whoa! Lots of unique values. Do you want to turn on binning? Which is what StatCrunch calls when it creates groups and it kind of groups them together. So yes, we do want to do that. Now there's one huge problem with StatCrunch um, in this particular table. And I'm wondering if you can look look at the table here, see if you can determine what is wrong with this table. You see it? So the, the issue here is 
like say 2000. Where does 2000 go? Is 2000 in this category? Is 2000 in this category? What they mean here is 1000 including 1000 up to but not including 2000. And then 2000 including 2000 up to but not including 3000. And so that's what they mean by that. So when we do our file, and let's see here, we're gonna, this is a little awkward, I know. Let's see if we can jump forward here. So for our birth weight, we're gonna do zero to 999. Frequency of one, relative frequency 0 0.01. And then 1000 to 1999, frequency of 18, 0 0.10. Uh, 2000 so you can see now my categories are not overlapping and that just makes it a little bit clearer about where those cutoff values belong and you can't your categories cannot overlap that's the key here that we're talking about and again the relative frequency here uh, relative frequency here may what am I trying to do may add up to 1.01 or something like that, um, but that's okay, that's just due to rounding. If it adds up to 1.03, then you've made some rounding error or calculation error within here. So continuous, you need, we call them classes, uh, and your class limits can't overlap. You have to have uh, separation there. All right, let's talk about stem and leaf plots. These are interesting and I kind of use these more casually, not in a formal publication, but just for myself I use these. I actually do it for this for exam scores. So I have some made up distribution here about exam scores and what we're going to do is we're going to take the first digit off of all of these. We're going to call those the stems. So you can see I have them written here five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the leaf, the leaves, are going to be the second digit and we're going to write them in order and we're going to whoop, we're going to see if we can get an idea of how the data are distributed from this so we're going to do let's see we have a 2 and an 8 a 0 2 3 7 9 0 2 5 6 7 9 9 Two, three, five, seven, seven, eight, eight, and one, one, four, five. And so those, this now is a stem and leaf plot. The stems are off to the left, the leaves are off to the right. So when I see this five over here, it represents 75. And you can see it's kind of like the table, but now it's kind of giving you some a visual representation of it as well. There's also something we can call a split stem and leaf plot where we would split each of these in half and go 0 to 4 and 5 to 9. So I would do a 2 here, 0, 2, 3, nope, nope, yep, 0, 2, 3, no, ah, just 8 here. I knew that wasn't right. So there's the 52 and 58, and then here's the 0, 2, 3, 60, 62, 63, and then 67 and 69 are here. And you can see it's very similar. It kind of gives you a little more of a breakdown about where the scores are. Um, and it seems that whoever made this data set up leaned heavily, more heavily toward kind of the top end of each grade. Than the, so look at the 70, you can see a little more upper 70s, a little more upper 80s. This could happen randomly too, but this data, particular data set is just made up. So those are the stem and leaf plots, where again the stems are the first digits and the leaves are the second digits. Related to this is something called a histogram. So see we have our, our stem and leaf plot here, just kind of reformatted a little bit. If we turn it on its side and just kind of take out the numerical values and think of well this is 50 to 59 this is 60 to 69 and make a graph out of that this is a histogram uh, there are two ways to label it your textbook and I've kind of seen it pretty consistently this way is labeled the lower class limits 50 60 70 80 I've also seen it labeled because this kind of pulls in the same problem where does 60 go where does 70 go so I've also seen it labeled 50 to 59 60 to 69 70 to 79 etc um, just out of curiosity, let's see if we can see how StatCrunch does it. We've got, let's do birth weights. So let's do graph, histogram, and we'll do birth weights. 
Um, it'll probably do this zero automatically, but let's start with zero and a width of a thousand and compute. And so you can see it's labeling the lower class limit, very similar to what uh, the birth weight did over here. So um, one thing you can do here if you're interested is you can get the same information from the table. If you highlight over a particular bar, it tells you the frequency for that particular range. So, Oh, you'll notice here for those who have had some mathematics, I can't point out on my mouse because when I, my mouse moves, it moves. But you'll notice there's a bracket on 2000 and a parenthesis on 3000. That's actually interval notation if you're familiar with that from an algebra course. So the 2000 is included, but the 3000 is not. I just noticed that. That's very interesting. All right, uh, next plot, a little less common, um, is called a dot plot. And this is where you have the values for discrete data only here, because for continuous, you have to have those intervals. Um, but for discrete data, you have the values, and then you have dots above, and those dots represent the individuals in that particular study, uh, or in that particular data set. And StatCrunch can do that for us. Um, I have age here, which age is, is one of those fuzzy ones. Is it discrete or continuous? Um, when you say your age, no one really says in your age, well, I'm, I don't know that I want to tell you. So we'll just pretend I'm 38 and eight months and four days. Um, no one says it like that. They just say I'm 38. You really always round down. Everybody rounds down. Some people round down multiple years. Um, I'm actually 40. Okay. So now it's out. Um, so you could say, well, really it's a continuous random variable because it's time. How long have you been alive? But age is not time you've been alive. Um, it's, it's really what we, when we report age, how many years have we completed, right? We don't, we don't say the next age until we've completed another year. So age, there's a good argument that it's discrete. So if we want to do this, um, a dot plot, we can do a graph and then there's this dot plot option right here. Uh, and we could do age and hit compute and you will see all of these dots right here for the different ages. So similar to a histogram, I've seen something like a dot plot in some graphics that are in the paper. Sometimes they'll use symbols for dot plots. They're actually not always very well done because a dot doesn't, the symbol doesn't represent one, it might represent 10, and so I really don't recommend that. All right, um, last thing I wanna talk about is looking at different histograms um, we have some vocabulary for the distribution shape. So I have four different histograms here. The first one you can see, it's not perfect, but it kind of you know, has a triangle or a bell shaped. It's, it's not exactly the same on both sides, but very similar. So we call that a symmetric or bell shaped distribution. Um, a uniform distribution is when uniform, in, you know, all the same. So uniform distribution, they're all the same. And then we have these two on the bottom that are kind of skewed to one side or the other. And this takes a little practice, but um, on the one on the bottom left, most of the observations are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then there's a few skewing it to the right. So that's skewed right. And then the other one, which is what I usually hope my test distributions end up, most people getting 70s, 80s, 90s, and maybe a few people pulling it to the left. So that one is skewed left. All right, let's summarize here from 2.2, the quantitative data. We've got um, discrete data for our tables there. The column on the left is just the individual values. If you have continuous data, you have these classes. So I've got some, some examples there. The key point there is that the classes cannot overlap. Uh, we have histograms, which um, the bar, they're bar graphs here. The key is that the bars don't, um, there's no gap between them because they're right next to each other. Um, and, um, and what I mean by that is the values are right next to each other. So 69 is right next to 70. So it's not a bar graph with individual classes, it's a histogram. Uh, we have stem and leaf plot, very similar to that. Uh, we have the dot plots, and then we talked about some of the distribution shapes, symmetric, uniform, skewed right, and skewed left. So that is it for this video, thanks for watching. Um, you can make some comments below if you're interested and you can check out the next or previous videos uh, clicking on the links above. If you're in the mobile app, you'll have to find those and navigate to those yourself. So thanks for watching.